There's no, no speed. speed control. Let's either full speed or offside. Percepts and concepts. Um, he calls this a, a monistic perspective that spirit is everything. And we have to see spirit in body, which is the reverse of materialism, which tries to see body in everything, that everything is materialistic. And lastly, the concept. And when we close uh, later today, I will take us through the last letter that Steiner wrote to anthroposophists on the subject of supernature and subnature. But just as a beginning, we're going to be dealing in this session with subnature and supernature, but mostly subnature. And when we're dealing with electricity, it has no material aspect to it. It's not a material substance. So it's akin to the ethers. And in fact, he calls it a fallen ether. And we'll look at that in, in our penetration into that. Now, a very fascinating thing that Steiner brings up is that our lungs are our most coarse aspect of taking something from the outer world in and releasing something back. The most coarse. And he says, our senses are doing the very same thing. In fact, what you take in through the senses can be considered as nutritious as food. And our sensory perceptions are a kind of refined breathing. In a way, this is why we can see a movie, because actually we are seeing 24 pictures a second. We are breathing in our seeing. Steiner says, all our senses are a form of light. For an esotericist, light is how you hear. Light is how you feel. Light is how you smell. They're all aspects of light. What they call light uh, from that perspective. So, um, uh, I did advance. OK. So, um, I think I'm going to let you peek at this and move on because um, I try to bold things that I want to stand out, but this is just more of the information on this. Um, if we look at thinking from an alchemical point of view, we see that what is going on in the thinking is a process that creates salts. So something called carbonic acid that rises up out of life forces is converted into salts in our thinking process. So um, the salt aspect in alchemy moves us towards the death forces. And when we look at this tree of knowledge and the sense nerve system, we can look into this. And this is the toughest time of the day. I'm sorry, right after lunch. Feel free to stand up and stretch or whatever if you need. But it's the toughest time to, um, yes, I'm sorry. I don't want to get okay. the exercise okay. in this. But, um, we can also see how in the human being, we have the solid, the fluid, the gaseous, and the fire, the four elements within us. And um, the solids are something that we precipitate out through our thinking. In our circulation systems, we have fluidity, not just the blood, but the lymph, and so on. And then in our breathing, we are connected to the gaseous. And then what is the fiery in us? And he talks about it in, in our will aspect and our mobility, ability to move, is 
fiery. So when we do you with me, we get warmed. When we move and so on and exercise and our will, we get hot from like the fiery element that we burn for it. Now, will thinking, you've had to really think hard. You can feel that you burned off a lot in you. There's also fire in that thinking. And you can sometimes have these moments where this enthusiasm for what you're thinking about just flows into you and you get really excited about something that you're thinking. Now, if anything from these last two talks and today that you go away with, this is the most important thing I hope you remember this. And that is that what Steiner's saying here is that it's our concept of the atom. It's not the atom itself, it's the concept of the atom that turns it into an immoral entity. So just as we have found in quantum physics that the onlooker makes all the difference, that we meet consciousness there, Steiner tells us that the concepts that we are bringing to this unobservable space changes it and can convert it into something that is immoral. Now, it's going to be tough to carry this concept of immoral with us, so I'm going to we'll expand on that. But with this statement down here, that Electricity, he doesn't say it is immoral, he says, or evil. He says it becomes a carrier of evil through how we conceive of it. Now, there's several books people have brought up to me, Paul Amberson, for example, uh, other anthroposophists who have read this and go, I'm just not going to deal with electricity then. It's too much for me, and I'm going to step back. And Steiner will go on to say here, that's not the right approach. That we need to, to deal with it, as we've been hearing in all sorts of other places. Um, but we have to realize that Fundamentally, we have to change our concept about what is the atom and what is electricity. So here's the common picture we have of the atom. It has a nucleus made up of neutrons and protons, and then around this spin electrons, like planets around the sun. And probably every one of you had that model given to you when you were in high school physics or chemistry. This is what makes the atoms immoral. This is what makes electrons the carrier of evil. This very concept. And it's wrong. And you know what? Scientists know it's wrong. And they allow it to continue in our high school chemistry and physics courses and even in many college courses. It's not until you get to graduate levels that they say, remember what we told you about the electron? <laughs> it's not true. So what is true? There is no particle floating around until we go and look for it. When we go and look for a particle, then we can find something that resembles a particle because the electron has some kind of ability to transfer energy and force. And our equation for force says it equals mass times acceleration. And if something has zero mass, then that equation doesn't work. So we figure out 
what kind of force it received. We can talk about accelerations from other ways, and so we determine what the mass must be. Anybody here a physicist? Oh, good. I can lie to you all I want. <laughs> You're losing me a little bit on the, the, that stuff, just to be quite honest. Like, I'm, I'm not quite sure where you're going with what is true. There's no orbiting. There's no orbiting electron. Okay. There's no particle here orbiting. And when they go into subatomic particles, they have no idea what's there other than what the effect is on things around it that can be observed. Because it has no mass. Because it has no particleness either. Okay. It's interesting. What does Steiner say an electron, I mean, or, you know, electrons or atoms are? Well, we'll come to that. But one of the things he points out is that it's where different forces create a kind of standing wave. Do you know what standing waves are? Yeah. So if you create um, waves, if I were to generate waves inside a contain, um, container, mm -hmm. I can find just the right rhythm to make those so that it looks like the waves aren't moving anymore. Mm -hmm. They're just standing there. If you look at the backbone, the sequence of forms in the vertebra, one can call those standing waves, mm -hmm. one after the other. Mm -hmm. They're occurring and metamorphic. Mm -hmm. um, Is it the same thing in a river as well? Yeah, you can see standing <laughs> waves in rivers for, for short periods of time. Yeah, and then for a second. They'll, they'll disappear, but yeah. So you have to think of this more as a field around. But science hasn't quite, they, they embrace fields, and then they step away from it. And then they come back, and then they go away. And I'm not quite sure where subatomic physics are today in regards to fields. Okay, so. Um, here's one new concept that the universe, they want to look at it as being filled with a quantum fluid. And this is some new concept they've come up with. And they say, uh, scientists are proposing that this fluid is composed of gravitons. Because we recently discovered gravity waves. And in quantum, when you go and observe a wave, the wave suddenly collapses into a particle. That they think that's what they are, that's what we're being told at least. And so there must be, with a gravity wave, a collapsible item into a graviton. When I think about this, if this is some light emanating source, so there's a sun here or something. And you think, here is, this is what they want you to think. Here is a stream of photons going in this direction, right? Continuous stream of photons. And in fact, in any line I draw out, there's a continuous stream of photons. Now, can I get in between two streams and not have a photon there? No, you can't. But that means that as I come closer to that source, these lines get closer and closer and closer until I pass some point of infinity right at the surface of this light source where all these lines overlap, which means that all those photons, because they take up space if they're a particle, all overlap too. It's, to me, it's an untenable model, this whole thing. Uh, it doesn't work. Um, so we have to ask the question then, what is light? And here we see two, we see a candle here, and down here we have a mirror. And so the